Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. And welcome back to Read or We're All Gonna Die. Eric, I read a book, and I'm gonna tell you about it. Today, I, today's book was requested by Malik Myers, who sent this for, uh, I informed me for Christmas, I think, last year. I was doing cool enough to send me a Christmas present. And um, this is actually not an official request, uh, but was this was... Really this year. No, last year. It was last year? Okay. It was last year. Uh, so everything I, runs together. Yeah, and so like I wanted to go ahead and finally look at this. He, he asked me if I'd gotten around to reading it, and I had not. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and knock it out. So, uh, I, so I read this. Out. Um, yeah, and like it's... Well, and, and he was hoping that I could talk about this before the movie comes out. Uh, this is a young adult novel, so, you know, the text is a little bit bigger. It's only like 200 pages. It's pretty short. And uh, it didn't take too long. It's not like Goosebumps big, though. No, uh, it didn't take too long to read. No, it's... it's uh, I mean, it's not in the, like... Like eight to nine age range. It's more like the you know junior high to early high school. I don't want to say, I don't want to say that. Like like like, like uh, just as far as like the formatting in, in so the so it's, it's above but, animorphs formatting wise. Yes, and then as far as like the actual content and language goes, uh, it's beyond that even. Um, and like. This was a little bit of a jarring experience for me because I've not read Young Adult in a really long time, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize just what is okay and what you can get away with in Young Adult anymore. Like there is, mm -hmm. there, there, there were some crass lines in this that felt very PG thirteen or beyond. Interesting to me um, that just you know just for the sake of realism or whatever. Like I'm not even complaining that they're there. It's just like I guess we do that kind of stuff in young in young adult books. And when I tell you what this book is about, you might be somewhat floored. Uh, that a young adult book went there with a with with a thing that looks as unassuming as Miles Morales Spider Man. I would never pick this up ever. I would go yeah, and there and there's there's a, there's a lot of these uh, young adult books now. We we we've, we've done this with uh, we done like a girl line with Mary Jane and stuff, and then uh, I, there, there's a there's a young Batman one that came out recently. Oh, 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 oh we did the um, young Batman Catwoman Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah, I, I've seen those covers. I would also never read any of those. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't think I would be like uh, chomping at the bit to pick those up and look at them. The only and, reason I would read a book like this, or like of my own volition, would be like if, now with the age you are. If I if I had a childhood connection to it, right. I have no interest in going back to reading books that I was yeah, reading when I was twelve. Like and I, I just I don't. And before I get into this, I feel the need to say this is wholly not for me, and I don't mean in the general generic like like this isn't a thing I'm into. Mm -hmm. it, this this doesn't speak to me. This is not for me. I, I I read this and feel like I'm not supposed to be reading this. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like like uh, like I feel like I'm not I'm not the right age. I'm not in in, in the I, like I, I just I feel like an old person now mm -hmm. looking, looking at a thing like this. Mm -hmm. Um, which is funny because of course the guy who writes it is probably not that much younger than I am. Uh, Jason Reynolds and um, he his uh, his prose is pretty decent. Um. The I, I think he's got some decent turns of phrase. I think he's got a good sense of imagery. I, 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 his dialogue writing is is, is decent. He's uh, he doesn't use a lot of dialogue tags. Uh, the 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 best way I can describe just just this on a technical level is, and this will sound silly, but it is a book. It's literary. Uh, like it, like I appreciate that. I'm not in love with the story. I'm not in love with the content of this. Miles Morales Miles, Miles, Spider-Man? Well, and I'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Um, but that seems real generic. We used to give them titles. You remember when we used to give books titles? Yeah. I'll get to that in a second. Spin-off Spider-Man or spin-off Superior World Line? I look at a thing like this, and I always expect and, and hope that I'm wrong, but I'm usually wrong, that it's not going to be a book that wishes it was in some other medium, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, a, it's a comic book thing, you expect it to be kind of an action thing, and uh, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna like, pretend like it's a movie, and it's not gonna do what prose does well. This doesn't have that problem. In fact, it goes a little too far in the other direction. Um, it's, it's a little dull. Uh, really? It's yeah, like like I don't. I mean, that's what I expect from the cover. Honestly, that looks like this looks like a dull book to me. Yeah, I don't mean to say that I want a Spider-Man prose novel to be like super action-driven. I appreciate that this is real internal monologue and that it's it, it, it's it's mostly from Miles. I think it's all from Miles's perspective, and uh, you, it's like a real you book. really you really get in his head, 
and it's more about his like 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 personal issues and and, and like feelings of insecurity and stuff and like like worried about there's 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 a there's a lot of stuff with his being worried that what his what his uncle the prowler um, said to him is true that like they are the like just before he died that like they are the same and he's uh, ultimately gonna end up being like like a like a like a crook or something um, in 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 you know not not the responsible superhero type, but that he's going to go bad because it's just in his blood and he can't help himself. And there is a race component to that, which I'll, which I'll talk about. Um, this is... This is this is real heavy about racial issues. Well, well not heavy, but it's, it's, it's very much about racial issues. And... Um, it's not trying away from those things. Yeah, I think it's a little too preachy about it. Oh, okay. Um, I do think it goes a little bit too far with that. Uh, when I say it's not too heavy about it, I guess what I mean is, it doesn't come right out and say some things that it's clearly doing. Or it's just like, it's real obvious, but it just doesn't like name thing, name them, you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, so yeah, it's weird that this book doesn't have a title that tells you more about what it's actually about, because it needs that. I think it's a little bit misleading. Like, like you say when you look at this, you kind of expect it to be uh, kind of dull, but it's like, like, he looks... You just I, look at the cover, and it looks like he's going to do Spider-Man things, and there's not very much of that in this book. Oh, see, and, see, see, I look at that cover, and I think there's not going to be a supervillain, that's probably going to be an origin story retread, and, like, the whole book is going to be him finally getting into the costume. That's what I assume from that cover. Yeah, it's not that. Okay. I. Uh, it's... Well, when you said his uncle's already dead, so... Yeah, it's, it's weird. So... There is a sort of origin retread in that we spend a lot of time at the beginning talking about things that you know already if you know anything about this character. I think this book probably only reads well to people who have never experienced this character before. Which is probably you know that book, right? It probably is, and that and that's and, and so that, that's fine. That's part of why it's not for me. If you know anything about Miles Morales, you will you may be bored reading this, or you it might. It might be too far into the book before you start to care, and you might find yourself putting it down. Mm -hmm. um, it's awkward because it reads like a universe where Miles Morales is the only Spider-Man there ever has been, and it does not mention hardly anything else about Marvel Universe stuff at all whatsoever. Um, it it is it is very squarely like cherry picking. The origin stuff that has nothing to do with Peter Parker, he's never mentioned whatsoever. Um, the 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 uh, like the stuff with the Prowler and the fact that his dad knows he's Spider Man and Gank. And that's it. Like that's that's all you get. So like it's it's pretty much just an introduction to this character, um, that's dealing with the uh, Without the defining aspect of the character of the character's origin. Of the origin, yeah. yeah. And it's weird that it spends as much time as it does kind of, like, recapping that stuff when there's not all that much there to recap. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's pretty much just uh, Miles Morales, uh, like, really in his own head about whether or not he should keep being Spider-Man and whether or not he can juggle the Spider-Man stuff in his personal life and, uh, like, like, constantly dealing with uh, his parents... Um, I mean, his dad knows he's Spider-Man, but like, uh, but but you know, he's he's ducking out of class, or he was before the book starts, you know, to be Spider-Man and stuff, and he's getting in trouble for things, and he's going to a school, and I don't remember if this is comic book or not, I forget, but he but but he's he's going to like a prep school, and he's I think that I think the, the comics do that, where like he's in a dorm room with Gank, and he's getting and in like. Uh, He's getting a scholarship, so his parents don't have to pay for it. His parents are poor enough that if he didn't get the scholarship, he wouldn't be able to keep going there. And that's part of the the major conflict of the thing is um, somebody frames him for stealing things out of the like school store he works for in order to get him like kicked out of school or like trying to get him kicked out of school. And you'd think it would just be like some kid or something, but that's part of a grand conspiracy. Oh. Yeah. And oh, like one of those things. And the things that the that he's he's uh, accused of stealing are like sausages. And like this is the big grand plan. 
from a immortal white supremacist. Oh. Who loves sauce? Is I don't know. Who I don't understand that. Who has brainwashed several people with the last name Chamberlain to do bad things to black people over time. Like there's a scene where we're in the the Morales's. I would say the Morales's. I guess they're they're not all named that. But we, but but we're, but we're in his house, right? And uh, there are like like uh, like his his dad has these friends that are over, and all of them have a story about uh, like a, a jerk face white guy named Chamberlain at their school who like harassed them, presumably just because they were black. And it turns out that they're all part of like this fraternity that they don't even completely realize that they're part of, that this uh, that this guy who his, his supervillain name ends up being Tho Borden, and he's like uh, and he's like taken over an old prison or something and he's uh, I don't even completely understand what his big end game is really like he just seems to hate black people okay yeah, and there's this uh there, there's this real preachy like we're people too speech uh, at the end mm -hmm. where so it so it turns out that all these pe and I don't know why they all have the same name like that would be really suspicious I don't know why you would want them all to have the same name if you have if you if you have this guy's plan but anyway so um they we find out at the end that yes they were all brainwashed and they weren't doing all these things completely of their own free will. But he went after them because they because he already had these beliefs that that uh, other races are inferior, and so the teacher that Miles uh, uh, like like doesn't like that keeps harassing him is racist. He's already racist, and um. he's not. And at the end, the whole thing is like he's not as far removed as like 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 from this warden guy. As as uh, as as like as like we hoped he would be, and this guy is uh, is doing crazy stuff. And again, like it's under duress. But this guy uh, is a history teacher that's talking about like why slavery was necessary, and like the Confederates weren't you know weren't so bad, and like here's why that needed it. And like he just lays it on like really super thick, and all the kids are really uncomfortable, but they don't know what to do about it. And so this girl that uh, Miles is really interested in is like trying to uh, set up like a protest where whenever he starts talking like that, all the kids will just like turn their chairs around. This is like the main conflict of the bees. Like this is what the book's about. Wow. And uh, like I'm not saying that you can't write a book about those things, but it feels a little heavy handed to me. And the end is real sappy. And like the opposite of like everything Ben has did with that character. Yeah. Like it sounds completely like un Miles Morales y kind of. Like Miles Morales deals with deals with that stuff in like a real sophisticated, subtle way. This sounds real juvenile. I think so. I mean, like I don't think Miles himself is really doing anything especially out of character. I'm not talking about the kind of stories that we're telling yes. with with Miles versus like I, like the kind of stories Ben has told. I agree with that, man. Like uh, I don't know, it wasn't like like it's 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 pretty well written. Like I said, I appreciate the fact that it's literary. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think I liked it. Ultimately, mm -hmm. with respect to Malik, I'm sorry, and I, I'm sorry if you really like this book. I just I didn't care for it. Um, and and it felt way too long for how short it is. Like I just didn't feel like we got enough done. Um, and there's a there, there's a big fight with this warden guy at the end with like with like a cat and nine tails that like turns into actual cats and stuff and I don't know where the magic comes from I don't know what any of that's about and like suddenly it gets real mystical and stuff but like that completely blindsides me because I don't feel like that we're, on, we're on, on our way to that mm -hmm. and also like there's some decent set up payoff stuff early on where it's like oh that's cool I didn't know that that was you know established to, to pay off to, to set up a thing later on but um and also like the gank is kind of funny you know mm -hmm. like, like, like he writes in well but there's this whole subplot about a uh, about about a cousin that Miles has that he didn't realize he had. Where we find out that his uncle maybe like wasn't quite as bad as we thought he was, 
um, we we're, we're, uh, we find out that he had a son, which seems like a weird thing to add in a book like this. I feel like I feel like those lives. are the kinds of things we always add in books like this. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, like there's there's a trilogy of Spider-Man novels that just gives Peter Parker a sister. Really? Yeah. So anyway, so that happens, and he's he's in prison, which kind of adds to that to that whole for Miles that whole like you know am I destined to go you dark thing? And I feel like it does uh, kind of teeter. Evil Spider-Man costume. Yeah. Right. Sorry, I just popped I my just, head. What are you talking about? Miles' what costume. Is? It's it's evil Spider-Man. Oh, am I yeah, sure. go dark? He's already he's already no, that's, yeah, that's fair. Sure. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just thought that as you were like, am I destined to go dark? I was like, he yes, of course. Look at your costume. But he is too teetering cool. a little bit on the Swellville Clark Kent thing of uh, like being maybe a little bit too concerned about about destiny and stuff. Where it's like I get worrying about that a little bit, but like there's unless you have like 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 certain major urges and things where it's difficult for you not to make the kinds of mistakes that that your dad did and that your that your uncle did. Mm. Like I feel like he's. Like way too overly concerned about that. I don't think he learns enough, you know, through the course of this mm -hmm. with that. But anyway, so he's got so so he's so he's got uh, his cousin who's in prison, and uh, he goes and visits him, and it's treated like this big mystery, and it kind of just uh, amounts to okay, he's got a cousin in prison, and like now they're gonna have a relationship, and he's gonna go see him again at some point. And, like that's resolved, like some 120 pages in and then we never pick up on it again and I don't even know why it's there because like it's seeded really hard like it's going to be connected to the A story somehow maybe and then it's just gone and so I just don't feel like the two stories are really connected enough mm -hmm. I don't know why we did that ultimately um, I thought that might have gone in a really interesting place but it just it just doesn't so I don't know I don't think there's enough here you know as part of it how many pages just does end up being like like I said, it's like two fifty. Two wow. Yeah, that looks real thin for a two fifty. Yeah. This this show is all is all about books that are thinner <laughs> that are thinner than they seem. That's right. So anyway, um, yeah, I uh, I have a tough time recommending this. Again, it's also not for me. Like, I I feel like maybe I would have appreciated this more if I was younger. I'm sure there's lots of books that both um, you and I liked in in our in our teen years that we would not like if we read them now. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Um, I try to really appreciate Maniac McGee if I read it right now, and I don't, and, and I, I don't know if maybe like I had to have had certain you know you know experiences in my past and stuff for for, for this to really resonate with me. But I mean, on a personal level, it didn't really resonate. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds yeah, almost so. kind of after school specially. Yeah, that's that's kind of how it reads. Like that sounds like a Saturday morning cartoon version of it's okay. And like if there was a little bit more going on, and it was a little bit more you know. You know, exciting. There's a little more meat to it mm. than like you, you know that stuff could be. Like, I don't have a problem necessarily with the fact that it's dealing with. It. I I'm with you. I don't think it's dealing with it. I uh, on as in as mature a way as it could be. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just weird to take that route with that character. When that's not really what Bendis did with it. Like, it'd be different if that was what that character was like. Always like this is this is what Miles Morales stories are like. Like, you could have just made. A Spider-Man story, right? Like, like Bendis deals with that stuff, but like, it's not. Well, it's it not the main crux. It of the does have that problem where, besides just generically, it is about power and responsibility. It didn't mm. have to be a Spider-Man story, really. You know, I mean, it kind of mm. could have been anybody. That I don't even know how necessary it was to put the costume on. Interesting. I mean, like he uses it some, and he uses his invisibility powers a lot because he's. A Miles that honestly is not as proactive as I wish he was. Um, that's not to say that that's not like, you know, in his character in this, where like that's part of the point, I guess. But I just, I was kind of frustrated for him not to come out of his shell a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know. But anyway, so that's uh, that. I talked about that too long. Anyway, um, so that's that's my review of that. Eric and I are going to go on now to the captain's log to the news. So look forward to that. And thanks a lot for watching. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. See you later, folks.